that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. So give me that old time. Give me that old time. Now give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm enjoying myself. Amen. One more thing and then we'll just share briefly and we'll close the service. If you're in this auditorium today, please listen to the announcement clearly. If you're in this auditorium, you are a CEO. When we use the word CEO, in this context, we are saying you run your own business. You have a registered business that is operating, or you have a business that is operating, whether it's registered or not, or you work for yourself, you run your own company, either full-time or part-time, but you have a company, you are a CEO, you are an ogre over your own business. Can you please rise up on your feet, whether you are male or female, whether you are a trader, or in a supermarket you get to, in a hairdressing saloon, or I've been in a construction company, or or you are a CEO, it's now you get your business. You are not working for anybody. Can you please rise up on your feet? Okay, bring out your biro. Make sure you have a biro in your hand. Rise up on your feet, get a biro in your hand. The ushers are going to give you a slip now. Remain standing, feel it, and submit it before you sit down. So remain standing. Fill it, your name, your phone number, and your email. Once you finish, you submit it before you sit down. So don't sit down with it. Remain standing with your biro. Fill it up, and then you submit. I didn't say sit down. You are sitting down. Stand up and fill it standing so that we'll be seeing you. So when you fill it up, in fact, when you fill it, come and drop it on the altar. So when you finish, come and drop it before you go and sit down. Fill it, you drop it, then you go and sit down so that there will be no confusion about submission. When you fill it up, drop it on the altar, then you go and sit down. We'll pick it on the altar so that... So you stand, you fill it up, name, legible, capital letter. Even your email, make it capital letter. Don't just put capital letter so that everything can be clear. Your phone number, your name, your phone number, your email. In capital letter, then you come and drop it on the altar. And then next week, Sunday, I'm meeting with all of you after the service for 15 minutes. Maximum 30 minutes. So please prepare. Put it as part of your program. Next week, Sunday, I'll meet with you. That Yahoo, that why is who get that why? Make it clear. So once you drop it, you now go and sit down. I'm meeting with you on Sunday after the service, every one of you. Your name, your phone number, your email, very clearly. Whether it's bookshop you have, or whether it's Babi Saloon, or you are CEO. So drop it, and then... So I need the... Ushers to now undo the collation together. Somebody should make sure that is done. God bless you. So next week, Sunday, we are meeting after the service for 15 minutes to 30 minutes maximum. 15 minutes to 30 minutes maximum. So all of you, now see you. Now, wow. As somebody, shall you see why we don't get nurse? No nurse. Everybody's a CEO. There's no professional. 
Everybody now, CEO, see CEO, half of the church, CEO. All of you should bring one, one million for real votes. This is CEO. Amen. All of you, one, one million. That's about 300 million for real votes. CEO. Ah, ah. Let me count how many of them be. CEO, one, one million. your name, your phone number, and your email. So we are going to compile it together. Next week, Sunday, I will meet with you and explain what we are planning to do so that you understand. So please, let's make sure that is fully collated and make sure the office does what needs to be done. Praise God. More people are bringing, so ushers, let's. I believe you have been given the newsletter for the month of March, so please go through it and note all the different conferences and meetings that are coming up. And I don't know, has everybody been given this also? Okay, so please, this one, you may need to laminate it and keep it permanently. So all the departments in Calvary Bible Church, all the coordinators, the directors, their phone number, so that if you need to do anything with any department, then all the teaching centers, their meeting days, the phone numbers of all the teaching center, all the house fellowship centers. So this one will be a very important material for you to keep as a memorial, so that when they are asking who is the coordinator of this, who do I talk to for this, you won't be confused. You'll know exactly who to talk to with reference to what. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis, Psalm 50, and then we'll go to Genesis chapter 4, Psalm 50. Let me introduce the message and we'll close Psalm 50 and verse number 5 Psalm 50 and verse 5 Gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice Father, we thank you because you are God and beside you there is no other God. You are the God that never changes, yet you change the situation. You are the God that rules and reigns in the affairs of our lives. Lord, we thank you for every man, every woman, every boy and every girl under the influence of today's message. Lord, send your word with power. Send your word with simplicity. Send your word with accuracy. And let it bring divine enlightenment. Lord, let no one live here the same. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I can hear your amen. amen. Next week, Sunday, we enter into what we call the railboat season in this ministry. What is generally known as a building fund in most churches. On the 31st of December 2013, this ministry clocked 18 years. And in the last 18 years of this ministry, God has been faithful to us to bring us into this awesome facility that belongs to us debt free it's the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous in our sight God has been so good to us and the entire project the entire project is known as the railboat project the word railboat is gotten from the book of Genesis chapter 26 where God said the Lord will make room for us and will be fruitful in the land 
Isaac had dug a well, and for every well that Isaac dug, there was a contention until he got to a place where there was no more contention. And he said, this is now Rehoboth, for God has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And many years ago, the Lord spoke to us that this is our own Rehoboth, because on many occasions before we got into this place, we have tried to acquire different lands and different properties, and there has always been contention, contention of lack of money, contention of lack of documentation, contention of before we gather the money, somebody else has bought all kinds of contention. And then finally God brought us to this place, and he said, this is it. I will never forget we have a lady that used to be a member of the church and she was an agent and she walked up into the office one weekday and said she wanted to see me and i said yes she said well pastor i've been hearing that the church needs a land the church needs a land but do you know there is actually some land behind us here it's just that <laughs> the place many people are running away is a dung hill but there are land there are plenty of land and it's very cheap oh if you don't mind, I say, you mean behind us here, there is land? And I say, okay, no problem. Take me there. I called one or two people, and then we came. And the very minute I got to the Idimu point there, because there is no way you could have assessed this place, there was a mighty dung hill, like four-story building of death on the road there. So when you, what you see now, you don't even understand. When I got to the dung hill, I felt peace in my heart. God said, this is it. I said, this is it inside this place? Yeah. Can anything happen yet? God said, this is it. And the Lord spoke to me and said, this is going to be your robot. I'm going to give this place to you, and you're going to be fruitful in this land. Looking at what God has done so far, he has already proven himself as a faithful God. I remember the first time we ever gathered to say we want to raise an offering and begin to share the vision of this work. We were on the road there. We couldn't even assess this place. We had canopy on the road, and we invited different people. We shared the vision. That was when Brother Matthews came and composed a song, speaking to the model, this dream will surely come to pass in Jesus' name. And today, we are seeing the dream become a reality. For those of you that were here, even before January last year, you know that this is not where we were as of January last year. Between March last year and October last year, God give, gave us more than double of the space we used to have. God brought us into this great and mighty place. And it happened because God said it, the people of God believed it, and God made it to become a reality. Next week, Sunday, we enter into another season. People of God, we have had all kinds of testimonies for many years of how God has lifted people, for how God has transformed the lives of people just by being faithful to the work of God. This morning alone, we have seen how that a woman was shedding tears because she did not believe that God can raise her to become who and what she is today. Many times, one of the things you need to understand is that what gives us joy as ministers of the gospel is more of lives that have been transformed. When that woman was giving a testimony and she was weeping, I was like, God, you have power. I will never forget many years ago when that woman walked into my office. As a matter of fact, she did not come to my office by herself. She came to see Pastor Charles because she was having major crisis in her life. And she came to Pastor and said, look, I'm going to women uh, liberation, whatever, whatever, something, something. I'm going to, my marriage is over. I'm going to divorce them. I'm going to report him to woman this, my ma everything. And Pastor said, you know what? She was on her way to Ikeja to end the marriage. And Pastor said, you know, why the pastor is around? Why not see him before you go? And she came and I asked her a simple question. Do you believe God? She said, yes. I said, if you can trust me and trust God, this same marriage, you will become great if you can do it. Today, you have had her testify on this pulpit over and over again. God has lifted and lifted the husband. Stories abound of lives that have been transformed. In the last one year alone, with what God did in this house, there are people that God has just shifted them to another dimension because of what they did in the house of God, because of their commitment to the house of God. Now, we are entering into another season. 
But you see, in the midst of all the testimonies, in the midst of all the joyful progress we have seen in this church and the life of people, it still pains my heart when I see men and women remain the same. I've seen in the last 18 years plus of this ministry, people that have been a part of this ministry, they have been a part of this ministry, they have seen the hand of God at work, they have seen the move of God, yet they have not gotten to a place of maturity to plug in so that they can testify. You know, both time we come year in and year out, and instead of seeing it as an opportunity to change their destiny and turn things around, they give offering instead of sacrificing. They do the usual instead of doing the unusual. And as a matter of fact, I had a different message that I wanted to preach today because it's about family. But within the week, I said, we kept looking at that light. By Friday, I told my wife, I said, when I begin to feel this way, it means God doesn't want me to go in that direction. I said, let me just focus on something else. And yesterday, I said, God, what do you want me to do? I said, no, don't wait until you start preaching this. Gather my saints unto me, those that are ready to make a covenant with me by sacrifice. So people of God, the opportunity is coming next week Sunday. A door is going to open next week Sunday that will open up a dimension in your life that you will live to testify about. So this morning and the next four weeks, part one to four, I want to talk to you about the covenant of sacrifice. The covenant of sacrifice. Because what God is requiring of us in this season of building fund and moving the project to the next level is not an offering. What God is asking of us is a sacrifice. What God is asking of us is to rise up and do the unusual, believe God for the impossible, and be ready for the unimaginable. The covenant of sacrifice. So when you look at our text, it says, God that my saints unto me and that's my mandate this season to gather out of this church a group of people that we say I don't want to be the normal I want to be the abnormal I don't want to be part of the usual I want to join the unusual I don't want to be part of the normal I want to be exceptional gather together to be my saints those that are ready, it's not by force, ready to make a covenant with me by sacrifice. People of God, we are having an opportunity of a lifetime. What did I say? We are having an opportunity of a lifetime. And it is my prayer that you will not miss this divine opportunity. Three things I want to say, and I close. We'll continue next week Sunday. The covenants of sacrifice. Number one, there are many people in the church that gives, but only few sacrifice. There are many people in the church that gives, but only few sacrifice. Today you have given, you've given your offering. Some of you, apart from offering, you stood up again. You gave for whatever. So you are giving. But listen and listen well. There are some things that can never happen in your life by giving alone. It takes a sacrifice for it to happen. So many people give, but only few have been able to enter into the realm of sacrifice. What does it mean to give? To give is to release to God something that you have to give is to release to God something that you have and one of the things that characterize giving is convenience so when we say giving is releasing to God the qualification is to give is to release to God something that is convenient for you so when we say it's offering time, yes, you are 620,000 in your account, you are wondering 5,000 in your account, 
you have 69,000 in your account, but when they say it's offering time, you bring 500 naira or you bring 200 naira, that is giving. That is not sacrifice. So to give is to release something to God within your comfort zone, within your convenience. And many people do that. Many people do that. But God is not asking for a seed that's or offering. is asking for a sacrifice. To sacrifice means to release something to God that is not convenient for you. To release something to God that is not convenient for you. So when you give, you release something that is convenient and comfortable. When you sacrifice, you are releasing to God something that costs you more. I am not aware of anyone sitting here or listening to the sound of my voice that will not close down their accounts if their life is at stake. I'm not aware that you have three million in your accounts and they say you have a problem and the only way is to go to do surgery for three million. You say, eh, let, let me die. I'm not aware of anybody like that. Why? Because nobody wants to die. But do you know that everyone under the sound of my voice is less than 60 seconds against such a calamity but for the grace of God but for the grace of God there are people that wake up in the morning healthy and in the afternoon they are talking dialysis they are talking kidney they are talking 30 million calamity why you can only claim to be rich you can only claim to be wealthy when the expenditure in your life is lower than the income in your life but your expenditure can become greater than your income in a split seconds. In a split seconds. People can leave church and be on the way and Okada will hit their son or hit their daughter and they are going to say, oh, they need to do POP, oh, hospital is on strike, we need to rush. And before you know, you are spending 800, 300, 400 that you never planned for. But the God that keeps you alive is saying, I need it. You say, I, don't, I can't give it. It's only somebody that is alive that can refuse to give. A dead man has no option. He can't even make a choice. So what does it mean to sacrifice? It means to release something that costs you. So people of God, if you show up here next week Sunday and make a commitment that does not cost you anything, God will bless you. He will give you an harvest, but you are not the one God sent me to. If you show up from next week Sunday, dropping the normal 200,000, normal 1 million, uh, let me just do 500. Okay, I did 500 last year. Let me do 750. If you show up from next week to do something that is convenient for you, God will bless you. There will be an harvest, but this message is not for you. It's a gather my saints. So it's a message for a group of people. The heaven has been waiting to promote a group of people. The heaven is waiting to reward a group of people. That heaven is waiting to take to another dimension. It is those people that God sent me to. And they are hearing my voice and may heaven grant you grace to obey. So number one, many give but only few sacrifice. Number two, many people sacrifice, but only few do it consistently. Many sacrifice, but only few do it consistently. I can guarantee you even though I may not know your story one on one I can guarantee that no matter how young you are or how poor you think you are if I investigate your life you have made sacrifices for something before many of you are here there are times that you did not have money 
but you saw people in need and you gave them because you felt well his own is more important than my own there are many of you here what you don't have for yourself you have contributed money to make it happen for somebody else so people sometimes sacrifice but the issue is they don't do it consistently they do it once in a while and listening and listening well it takes sacrifice to open your heaven but it takes consistent sacrifice to keep it open so there are people that have experienced open heaven. He hope he close. He hope he close. He hope he close. Why? Because their consistency is questionable. Their consistency is what is questionable. If anybody has told me when I started out as a Christian that there will be a day that I will give five million. Bam, like that, to building. Then the second one, you give another two million, you pass seven million. Last year alone, 26 point something million. If, so, if they told me, I could say, ah, ah, say what's happen. But when I saw people coming out in those days, when Zen is just started, small, small girls, they would just carry Zen a check for church, they would just carry 50,000, 20,000. I say, hey, one day. It was a desire. And from the days of 5,000, the days of 10,000, the days of 50,000, I will never forget when this journey of Rehobo started. And God said, you must do something. I said, yes, I'm ready. What do I do? Our rent was about to expire then. And God said, give your rent. <laughs> I said, give my rent. <laughs> give my rent. <laughs> rent. <laughs> so give your rent. Railboat was the same first week of March then. I think the first or the second. I think it's the first railboat or second one. Our rent was to expire 31st of March. God said, give your rent. And I gave it. The first real boat ever. I will never forget. It's either the first or second. But do you know what happened? Those that are being church knows the testimony. I gave that rent to real boats. And I started believing God for rent. And then March ended. The agent refused to come and collect money. April, May, June, July, August. Ah, ah. This age, you're not going to collect money. So by around July, August, the money was down. You know, I've, I've been gathering it again. It was almost there. So I now sent a message at least before I go tell her, make her don't get something. So I now sent him and said, hey, you man, we see now. You know, I'll collect it. He said, no, your rent has not expired now. I said, no, it expired in March. He said, no, now October. I said, no, it's March. I said, I said, now October. You, will you, are you? Ah. I say I have my receipt. He said, Me too, I have my documents. <laughs> so I gave the whole of the two years' rent for railboats, March. And a rent that was to expire in March, agency in October. And by August, God provided the money. Listen to me. I look at people today, they think, uh, Ah, I would like to be like Pastor. You can't be like Pastor without the sacrifice of Pastor. Abraham's blessings are mine is a song. You can't get the blessings of Abraham by tenor or auto. You get the blessings of Abraham by sowing the seed of Abraham. So many people have a testimony of sacrifice. But if I had stopped at that bus stop, I wouldn't be testifying the ones I'm testifying today. Hello? I won't. So it's not just enough to sacrifice one and say, ah, you know, five years ago I gave. That is all story. Are you consistent in the place of sacrifice? So, number one, many people give, only few people sacrifice. Number two, many sacrifice, but only few do it consistently. So for those that have never entered into the realm of sacrifice, this is a call to sacrifice. For those that have sacrificed and they have been wondering what else should I do, this is a call to consistency. A call to what? Consistency. Did you hear that woman's story? All through December, I was in the cell. All through December, 
the nine other people are in Kirikiri. What did he do? Living in the same house with the 419. That's all. That's our offense. Renting a house where the 419 is. Do you know what your neighbor is doing? Hello? Do you know what your neighbor is doing? One of our ministers in the church has a crisis. He's presently in Kirikiri. He did not steal money. He's in Kirikiri. He did not defraud anybody. He's in Kirikiri. Hello? He did not steal. He did not defraud. Just because he connected this person to this person. And the money that this person gave was given to this person in his presence. So nobody say he collect money. Oh. And that is not the first time they have done business. They have given the man money before. They have done business. But this one, where they can't give away the man around, they say, now nah, you introduce us to that. And he has been in Kirikiri since October. This is February. Listen to me. But for the grace of God. But for the grace of God. We are not talking of the business, the thing where they click click for, not like, like two million, or I mean two point something million. Now they click click since October, November, December, January, February. No be 20 million, no be 100 million. No. People are stealing in billions. They are walking away, getting shift as it tight to Person, when no steal, they click click since October. You don't believe God. Don't wait to learn by experience. <laughs> don't wait to learn by experience. Do you know what is keeping you alive? It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. I've seen brand new cars written off in one day. Right off. And right off. Bam, bam. We're coming to church last year. You saw the, you saw the picture. That's so the Dango Teti cleared the old car, cleared everything. With the pregnant woman inside. I came out, my wife came out, baby intact, the boy is here now bouncing. Which money could have saved you from that? Hello? People were crying, hey, see this car, hey, heavy car. I said, you don't understand, my baby, my baby. <laughs> what car can replace a son of joy? What car? How much is car? Car that you can go to the dealer and buy it and come back within three hours, car don't set you. Hello, can you buy life? Can you buy life? Hello? Because sometimes when they say you don't understand, you don't understand. You don't understand. It's true. If you understand. <laughs> say, ah, which testimony they just they give? No, they don't give testimony two weeks ago. Last Sunday again, give testimony. Ah, the wife never fit into they can't give testimony again. If you have died three times and came back to life. You will give testimony 30 times. Because you never died before. May you wake up. And now you go say testimony too much. Don't you know, say, are you ready? Because God is ready. Number three. Many people give. But only few people give exactly what God wants them to give. Many give. But only few people give exactly what God wants them to give. Only few people enter into perfect obedience. Because let me tell you something. No matter how much you give to the building fund, we are going to collect it. We are going to record it and we are going to spend it. But guess what? We can't give you the harvest. Only God can give you the harvest. There is no man of God on earth anointed to answer prayer. We are all anointed to pray. Nobody is anointed to answer prayer. Only God can answer prayer. So question, if the God that will answer the prayer does not believe you have obeyed him, who am I? I can lay hands on you and say you are blessed. I can pour oil on you and say it is done. It's not done. Because the person that will answer the prayer and say, no, don't fool yourself. Oh. I told him to do 200. He did 180. It's 20,000 that are short of obedience. I told him to do 70,000. He did 50,000. I told him to do 5 million. He did 3 million. So many people give. But when it comes to perfect obedience, giving exactly what God wants you to give, Many fail in that regard. Why? Because they don't hear God when it comes to giving. 
So you have one week to go and seek the face of God. Lord, what will you have me do? It was ordinary rent I gave in the first row boat. And God spoke to me and said, Real boats shall be for the rising and falling of many. People can bear me witness. When I saw the video last week Sunday, I called the administrator there and said, why are you people still in yesterday? Every prophecy I gave has come to pass. You are still showing eight years ago prophecy. I said, don't you people believe in the anointing? Am I not alive? Did I travel? You can't come for me to give fresh prophecy on video so that they can track it and see that God is at work. Everything I said there has already happened. You are still showing all the days. Say, come, let's show them the future so that they will see, so that when it happens, they will know that God has not expired. I've said it for many years. What God will do, He will do. You will only be a spectator if you refuse to be a partaker. So this project shall be for the rising and falling of many. And He told me clearly, and I said it. Say, as people commit to this, this project will not be complete without them having a house of their own. Many of you are here today. You know where you started from. You know how we're believing God for the rent of your house today. You are landlords, not of one house. One house, but houses. Many of you, you know how you came here. I live in my own house now. That house was built in three months. Three months. Foundation to completion. Three months. Three months. The house was completed. Why? Because of faithfulness in the house of God, releasing favor in the marketplace. So you need to hear God so that you will do exactly what God wants you to do. It's not every offering that is accepted though. For it to be accepted, it must be exactly what God wants it to be. Let's round up. Leviticus 22. Leviticus 22 from verse 20 to 25. Not all offerings or seeds are accepted by God. The Bible said the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. And the proof that God has accepted your offering is that he will release an harvest. So in the Old Testament, when people give, fire will come to prove that the offering is accepted. Look at it. He said, whatever has a defect, you shall not offer. For it shall not be acceptable on your behalf. Whatever has a defect, you can't offer. It will not be acceptable. It's not every seed that God will accept. So if you bring something that is contrary to obedience to the voice of the master, we will collect it. We will use it, but God will not accept it. So you have one week to seek his face so that you will not miss him. And whosoever offers a sacrifice of a peace offering to the Lord to fulfill his vow or a free will offering from the cattle or the sheep, it must be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no defect. It must be perfect to be accepted. And perfect is hearing God and doing exactly what he says. So if he tells you 3,000 naira, you do 3,000. If that's what he tells you. It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality and the obedience. Many of you are here. You have never given anything. We are here already without your money. So it's not about your money. It's about obeying God so that God can turn your life around. Don't need anybody to tell you. I stood on this altar. Told, told you last year this wall is coming down. I told you. I said, see the air condition, see the exalted order. Are we not there? Who, what else do you need? Listen and listen well. I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit before the 31st of December. For every one of you that joined this covenant of sacrifice, you will see a new dimension of God. You will see what a new dimension of When your wife said, even if I don't believe you are a man of God, not that I don't believe, I know, but with this one, I now know that you are a man of God. That's a dimension of God showing forth. 
Hello? Look at the next verse. Those that are blind or broken or maimed or have ulcer or eczema or scrap, you shall not offer to the Lord, oh, nor make an offering by fire to them on the altar to the Lord. Don't offer. They just come and bring one chaka chaka. No! No! God is specific about what he wants. He doesn't just... It's not a, it's not a policeman that you squeeze money into his hand. Even Nigerian police know they call every boy. Say, hey, open up. Wait till they open up. Now, now we go. I better change them. Hey, a bull or a lamb that has any limb too long or too short. Look at this one now. Listen, oh. He says, Either a bull or a lamb that has any limb too long or too short, you may offer as a free will offering, but for a vow, it shall not be accepted. <laughs> so, for offering, you can come with all this, your family, but for real boat, it shall not be accepted. It's not thought that I should be No, this one. It's a covenant of sacrifice. So it cannot be accepted. So you can be doing all this short leg, long leg offering. You say, well, but when the cause of vow, don't try it all. Next, you shall not offer to the Lord what is bruised or crushed or torn or cut, nor shall you make any offering of them in your land. Many of you know, if you check the offering you gave, the, the notes don't see, I use a tape, go ma'am. Now you give, come give God. Hello? Finally, verse 25. Nor from a foreigner's hand shall you offer any of these as the bread of your God. Because their corruption is in them and defects are in them, they shall not be accepted on your behalf. So people of God, not all offerings, not all seeds are accepted. So God is calling us to do what? To come into the place of sacrifice. How many of you under the sound of my voice have ever eaten egg before? If you've eaten egg before, either boiled or fried or roasted, whatever, egg. Okay, now how many of you have also eaten chicken before? Listen and listen well. In order for you to eat egg, all that the chicken has to do is to lay the egg. So every time you eat egg, that's an offering. Because the chicken was offering egg, but the chicken was still alive. But the day you eat chicken, you are not eating offering. You are eating a sacrifice. Because for that chicken to be fried and enter your plate, blood had to be shed. Somebody had to lay down their life. So every time you carry a lap of chicken, somebody has sacrificed for you to have that chicken. When you eat egg, it's an offering. The chicken is still alive, playing games. So God is saying, I don't need your egg. I need your chicken. God is saying, I don't want you to just come and write check and lay a check. I want you to lay blood on the altar. And do something that even you yourself will know. You know the offering where you give, you say, Am I normal? What thing they use to do me? I bet that they use something for that church. That's the kind of offering. The one where you say, Even you go confuse for yourself. Rise up on your feet. The prayer is not long. Jesus Christ looked over Jerusalem and he began to weep. <laughs> weep. Say, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How many times have I wanted to gather you like a mother and but you will not allow me? Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou hast not known the day of thy visitation. Next week, Sunday, a gate of supernatural visitation is open. But will you assess it? So the prayer is, Lord, help me not to miss you in this real boat season. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Help me not to miss you in this real boat season. That's just one simple prayer. And I'm going to use your offering on this altar and the seed you have sown on this altar for the less privilege as a point of contact to call upon the heavens concerning your destiny. 